Fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I just need you to have the models ready by 4.30. I'll be there right around 5. Yeah, I got to go. I'm on the, um, the TEDx stage right now. And um, yeah, I got to go. Yep, you're reading my mind. All right, cool deal. All right, perfect. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Hey, guys. Um, can you hang on one second? I just got to send an email really quick. Hang on. All right, perfect. Wow, so I'm on the TEDx stage. This is pretty awesome. I need to upload this to my Facebook and uh, Instagram really quick, guys. So, um, everyone smile. Perfect. So obviously that was a little bit obnoxious, um, but we are, uh, I think we're a little overly stimulated by um, technology. Um, I know um, back in uh, 2006, um, this was probably before, before um, smartphones and before the smartphone explosion, our iPads, our tablets, we used to have this thing um, called boredom. And, <laughs> and it's, it's really, it's kind of non-existent anymore. And, uh, 2006, I'm in my first, first apartment in uh, Ann Arbor, actually, and as I'm uh, outfitting this apartment, I, uh, I pull from my mom and dad's house uh, a nice love seat. I pull a, um, an area rug, coffee table, make it all look great and fantastic, and believe it or not, I actually randomly pulled a bust form that I found in my um, parents' basement. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure why we had it, but it was just randomly in there, and I thought it would be fantastic to put it in my apartment just to make it fancy and look cool. And uh, so, yeah, so this one particular day is a, a nice hot summer day, and I decided to um, turn off the TV. I decided to log off the internet log off my space only after I chose my top eight friends. And I decided to sit in my, my, um, my living room and just be bored. Like, I just allowed myself to just disconnect and just kind of let my mind run. <clears throat> so as I'm sitting there um, in, this, in this apartment, the first apartment that I lived in, uh, I'm like beginning to look around the room and looking at all these things and I look at the bust form, and as I'm staring at it, I'm looking at it, I'm like, she kind of needs some clothes. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, I think I can make a dress on that. And I have no idea why I thought that, but just letting the boredom and the creativity take place, I just let it flow. And sure enough, um, actually, I'm going to introduce to you um, my assistant, Jana, and um, Deidre as well, um, who's going to model for me today. And come on out, guys. Woo. So I want you to not pay attention to them and actually just listen to me. And <laughs> just kidding. So, you know, at this time, I pulled the, the bus form out from the center of the room and I started rummaging around my apartment looking for paper and tape and wrapping paper, and I just started draping this bust form. And believe it or not, I actually ended up making this crazy, like, futuristic Judy Jetson kind of dress. And mind you, I've never gone to fashion school. I've never had any really a, a strong interest in fashion. And I've never, I've, I've never, I've, like, I don't know anything about doing fashion construction or anything like that. But here I, here I am with this crazy dress on this bust form. And I'm thinking to myself, what can I do with this? Uh, at the time, I was uh, managing a store in Ann Arbor, and they had um, these huge picture windows, display windows, and we did absolutely nothing with them. So I kind of took it upon myself to take these creations and kind of work them into the displays. So I ended up um, basically taking a dress and whatever the product we we're promoting that particular month, 
I would t get all the signage or the marketing material, and I would go and create a dress out of all this marketing material, display the product next to this dress, and put it in the corner window. And uh, so at this point, um, I remember like people who would work there um, would call me, they'd be like, Matt, Matt, come to the window, come to the window, you're not going to believe us. I'm like, what? So the window ended up getting crowds drawing around it. There was um, people taking photos, and it, all this um, emotion started, or not emotion necessarily, but uh, it just started sparking some kind of interest in people. So at this time, I, uh, I had a woman once come in, and I had a particular dress in the window, and she came in, she wanted to know who made this dress. And um, before I even got to say I was the one to make it, she kind of went on to tell me a story how her husband just passed away. She was in town visiting her son, who was at U of M, and basically uh, she was very emotional. She, she basically said that the, the dress in the window was an exact replica of the dress she was married in. <clears throat> And I was like, wow, that's pretty, pretty fantastic, pretty amazing. And once again, this kind of sparked something in me, um, thinking, what can I do? Like, this is creating some kind of buzz, and I, I'm, where can I take this? I, I mean, I started off with complete, utter boredom, and then went to creativity, and kind of honing this creativity. And so I'm thinking, where can I hone this? What can I do with this? So... I ended up getting asked by my then job to outfit four models for this hair show. And mind you, I've never created anything for someone to wear. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was up for the challenge. So I definitely took the challenge to heart and uh, started draping and creating all these crazy um, outfits, basically, for the show. And the show went off really fantastically. It was... Um, just like a really great success. Uh, people were seeing the, the, the outfits being actually worn rather than on a bus form in the window. In the beginning, all of my stuff was very, almost like avant-garde. Um, and I couldn't really tell you if it was fashion or if it was art or if it was sculptural art. I didn't really have um, a specific title for it. After I would display my artwork in the windows, I would um, pull them out and tear them apart and just recycle them and throw them away. And this, once again, starting, started evoking emotion in people. Um, people were up in arms with me because I'm destroying this artwork. And to me, I'm just thinking, it's just paper. I can make another one. It's not a big deal. And ultimately... This, once again, sparked something in me, like, what can I do with this? So, in 2009, I am, once again, tearing down a display in the window, and it's this huge... Oh, this is Krista, everyone, by the way. Um, she's out to model as well. So, in 2009, um, I get this idea as I'm tearing down another display, I really should be putting people in these dresses. This is what people are almost requesting of me to do. And <clears throat> I do the same thing. So I ended up making a goal for myself in 2010 to make an entire line of dresses out of unconventional materials and just upcycle the heck out of them. Um, at this point, people were dropping off National Geographics to me. Um, from data back from the 1950s, I'm sure people were really upset that I was tearing them apart, but um, I was getting VHS tape from the 80s. Um, phone books, people were dropping those off. Um, you know, all these crazy things, plastic bags, grocery bags, all of this stuff was just being sent to me, and I am here in 2010 creating an entire line. So at this point... I have um, a friend of mine who's telling me, you need to do an ambush runway. And I had no clue what an ambush runway was or is. Well, I do now, obviously. But she explained to me, this is um, a runway show that you know, people in New York City do, apparently do, where you know, if you don't have money and you're kind of like an upstart and you want to get your stuff shown or out there, you 
ask some models to donate their time, and you get some hair and makeup done, you put them in all their dresses, and you par parade them in a very busy populated area. So I did exactly that um, in downtown Royal Oak on a busy day, and actually the, the date was 10, 10, 10, and here we were stopping traffic and turning heads and making a big commotion with all of these dresses. <clears throat> um, at this time, it, it, it was a, a big eye-opener for me to think, I need to come up with a, a business with this. Um, it's, it's taking off. So I did that. I came up with um, the paper dress code, is what I called it, and uh, created it from there. Um, at this point, a little, my, my name started getting out there a little bit more, and people were um, wondering more about me. And I had um, a call, I got a call from someone, and they had asked me to, um, would, would I be able to headline their charity event and help them raise money and maybe donate a dress? <clears throat> and we had a couple, um, they had a couple of uh, news anchors from the Ch Channel 4 News, and they wanted them to be there as well and um, MC it. Well, I said, sure, you know, let's, let's put someone in a dress from the news station. So we ended up doing this. Um, it, it just ended up exploding and taking off. That's when I had all these models there on stage um, at the event. And then it just kept going. Um, at this point, while I was there, the style editor wanted to do a, a story on it. So we ended up doing a Dateline special on these dresses for um, Channel 4, which was pretty phenomenal and mind-blowing for me. Here I am, basically bored, out of my mind, in my first apartment, and I created a business out of it. Like, how is this even happening? Like, this is nuts. And, you know, just allowing yourself to be bored and letting the creativity flow and then honing it is pretty phenomenal. At this point, um, I created this dress out of, um, you probably saw it in the brochure, um, when you came in today, but it was made out of complete car um, books and vinyl, like what you see at um, like a dealership, like the, the big uh, vinyl uh, banners that go up. I shredded them, turned it into a dress, and we uh, dressed, uh, she was former Miss Michigan 2004. She's now an anchor on Channel 4. Ashley Barrissey wore it to, um, to the event. Uh, you would have thought that I outfitted Lady Gaga to the event. She, she was being swarmed by people. Um, no one wanted to look at the cars. They wanted to see what she was wearing. It was absolutely, absolute chaos. Um, I mean, just when you see something like this out in public, I mean, it's going to be not normal, obviously. You're not wearing cotton. You're wearing paper. So um, that opportunity took me even <laughs> further, where I got to meet some amazing designers, photographers, artists, you can see all these amazing photographs that are being flashed up behind me. Just the amount of people I've met and the, amount, the opportunities, opportunities that have been presented to me have been phenomenal just from honing boredom. It's, it's kind of interesting. You just don't necessarily always think about it. But at this point, I, um, I, I've been employed, or I'm sorry, not employed, but I've been commissioned by a lot of um, top Detroit businesses to basically make dresses out of their logos for either grand opening events or um, random, just some of the most random things. I've, I've got to meet some amazing celebrities and rubbing elbows with celebrities and working alongside of them for events. Um, and once again, I bring it back to just the, the whole fact of here I was sitting in my bedroom or in my living room, my first apartment, and I shut everything off. I, I logged off and I basically um, shut everything out and let my creative freedom flow and then just honed it in. Um, you know, one of the big things is if you can just only imagine what you could do if you just allowed yourself to be bored and not mindlessly thumb through your smartphone all day. I'm Matt Richmond. Thank you very much.